I have trained 1000 AI soldiers to fight each other and today we will find out just how important are medics on the battlefield. I promise, the results and strategies used will surprise you in this fourth episode of Epic AI Wars. Underneath the previous episode, I asked what soldier should I add next and a small civil war ensued. The comments were divided into two main factions, Trebuchet Gang and Medic Gang. Despite putting a good competition, Trebuchet got less votes, so meet our new soldier, the Medic. Similar to other soldier types, Medics can move forward, backwards, left and right, as well as horizontally. Pretty smooth, but not as smooth as clicking the like and subscribe button. Rotation isn't any different either, Medics being able to rotate their body left and right and scan the area using their eyes. Once again, similar to Warriors and Musketeers, Medics will shoot a set of raycasts in different directions. On collision, just like the Chinese mass surveillance system, the rays will return all the necessary information about the agent, starting with its distance and ending with the credit score. Well, almost. The ray will return the distance and the tag of the obstacles it collided with. This way, the agent knows what is in front of him and how far it is. Having the rays pointing at different angles will also allow the agent to know the relative position of that object. But that's basically where the similarities end. Compared to warriors and musketeers who have the balls to fight back, medics choose the path of peace and prosperity. I know, right? F***ing losers. Anyways, medics are unable to attack or deal any damage, at least not physical damage. Instead, they're able to summon a healing bubble that will last for several seconds and heal any allies inside it. I was considering whether I should allow medics to also resurrect teammates and was thinking how that would work, but in the end I decided it would be too overpowered, so I've stuck with healing only. But perhaps later in the series, I might add a necromancer that will be able to resurrect the dead. Let me know in the comments below what do you think. In order to see how efficient the medics are, I first decided to have one team fight with and the other team fight without the medics. In order to train, I had each team consists of 50 soldiers and every round Team Blue will spawn a random amount of warriors, musketeers and medics, which shall result in a more versatile environment for training. Also, the blue soldiers will have default brains as the ones used in previous episode. Soldiers in Team Red, on the other hand, will be consisting only of elite fighters, the biggest test and smartest test brains in the universe. However, Team Red will have no medics. Initially, both teams were quite confused and the agents were trying to understand the environment by exploring the possible actions as well as the map, especially the medics. You can see how this brave soul is scouting inside enemy lines without hesitation. At round 6, we can already see a few red warriors rushing the enemy front lines and some sort of battles occurring here and there, but not much. At this point, it was getting late, so I left the agents train overnight and here is the result I saw the next day. Team Red didn't waste any time scoring about 40 wins against Team Blue and you can clearly see it is fully deserved. Reds came up with some impressive strategy where the warriors rush forward and then musketeers follow behind in a straight line formation, covering their teammates with fire. I ain't gonna lie, I was pretty surprised to see this kind of cooperation and strategies being used. Each round was about 3 minutes long, so after 35 hours of training, here is the final result. This time, the team will consist of 500 soldiers each and will have to fight until the last survivor falls. Pause this video right now and make your bets in the comments below. Who is gonna win? The dumb blue team with medics or the apex fighters from Team Red? By the way, this time I've implemented an MVP camera which will follow the current MVP soldier, so it shall be easier to see what they are up to. Moreover, I said I will give the MVP a special hat. A hat that will show how much he loves weapons and using them. So I think I got just the right one. And we already have our first MVP. Both teams have suffered casualties, but I bet most of them come from friendly fire. Despite Team Blue having medics that are working extra hours to just heal their teammates, they still are losing so far, sitting at around 460 soldiers, while Team Red has about 20 more personnel alive. You can already see the differences in the strategies used. 
Team Red is slowly getting into their formation and moving towards enemy lines, while Team Blue seems to be struggling a little with organizing the units. But then, despite the chaos within the Blue Army, it started being clear that they actually know pretty well what they're doing, since Team Red has encountered some opposition and their numbers start dropping faster than my self-esteem. As a result of this attack, Team Red has lost lots of their soldiers, giving the lead to Team Blue. That being said, the attack continues and Red Warriors are getting closer and closer to the front lines. The MVP now goes to Team Blue. Just look at this dude! It seems there was quite the fight here, with casualties from both sides. The MVP is holding strong, fighting like a tiger within enemy positions. Luckily he is not alone, you can see some of his comrades trying to help, but they are surrounded. Meanwhile, thanks to this sort of sabotage operations and strong defense from the riflemen, Team Blue is drastically increasing their lead. It does indeed seem that medics play a core part in this, since we can see how part of them are escorting the warriors in the heart of the battle, while others are healing the riflemen in the backlines. Team Red kept losing the fight, but then something quite weird happened. I believe I haven't trained the agents long enough, because once the number of enemies dropped close to 10, the remaining blue soldiers found it quite difficult to locate and neutralize the remaining targets. Instead, they would wander around until they bump into the wall or get shot. It got to a point where both teams had only two remaining soldiers, which were unable to find each other. That was um, unexpected. Despite being dumber than the guy I keep seeing in all of my mirrors, Team Blue were able to put a really good fight and even had the lead for the first half. But as it sometimes happens, it took too long to finish, so everyone involved simply got bored and called it a day. But that gave me an idea. If even this dumb, foolish, brainless, unwise, silly, dense, dull, witless, daft and stupid AI... Uh, um, what was the point I was trying to make? Anyways, I wondered what strategies a smart medic AI would use and how the rest of the soldiers would adapt. So I have started training from scratch. This time, both teams have the same brain parameters and both teams are allowed to use any of the three existing soldier types. To keep it once again more interesting and diverse, the amount of each soldier type per team will randomly be decided at the beginning of each round. Finally, after 40 more hours of training, the agents are ready for the final battle. As any respectable fight, this one also starts with a healthy dose of friendly fire. Hit your people so the enemies are scared. Smart. Right off the bat, the strategy implied seems to differ compared to the previous round. The medics seem to be gathering in the direction of the northern flank, and I wonder what their plan is. Oh, wow, you can now clearly see a straight line formation. Meanwhile, Team Red is in the lead, having 420 alive soldiers, compared to the 390 in the blue team. The medic line is now entering the enemy formations. I have no clue why they are doing whatever they are doing, but not gonna lie, it seems to be working. It's even working so well that we can see Team Blue attempting a similar mission on the southern flank using their medics. That's so interesting. I would assume it has to do with the fact that when there are several medics in a cluster, it's quite difficult to unalive them due to the constant healing. So maybe the AI realized that using the medics as a meat shield is much more efficient than having them heal the warriors or musketeers. This right there is exactly why I love machine learning and doing these projects. Oh wow, so is the strategy of pushing with medics this OP? Because now Team Blue has basically caught up with Team Red. That's a pretty impressive comeback. But what's more impressive is how the rest of the fight took place. Both teams were putting a good fight, resulting in the score being almost equal for the entirety of the fight. Moreover, as you can see, instead of having local fights in different regions, the battle seemed to have taken place all around the map. I think we can now easily say, without shadow of a doubt, that medics play a crucial role on the battlefield. The presence of these soldiers was able to completely alter the strategies used. But if you thought that was interesting, check out how this ended. After chasing each other for a while, something really weird happened. All, or at least the big majority of the remaining soldiers, are medics. That basically means that there are no more soldiers who would be able to fight.
It seems like we actually have a tie this time. For the first time in the series. I told you this video will surprise you. Alright, in the next episode, I think of introducing obstacles to the battlefield or some interactable items. What do you think? Also, if you want more content with Pogo, make sure to check out this video where Pogo learned how to dominate Fall Guys. Thanks to all of you for helping me reach this unbelievable milestone of 5000 subscribers. That's such a huge number for me. I mean, that's almost the size of Moldova's army. So, thank you.